Has this ever happened to you? Shoot, I don't have enough level, but my inputs are clipping. What's going on? Or this? Dang, my faders are at negative 20, but they're already too loud. I get it, gain structure is tricky. Today we're gonna go over gain structure so that your console can be its best self. Hey, if you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell. I'm here to help you make every worship mix enjoyable. Game Structure has three main areas that we're gonna look at. There's front of house, the console, and the monitoring system. But let's look at the console first. Your console has a bunch of gain stages, and they all play their own role in getting your mix dialed in right. The first gain stage is your source, or what's making the sound in the first place. If it gets louder, everything else gets louder downstream. So if you're an electric guitar player and you can't hear yourself, don't crank up your amp. That messes up everything for everyone else down the line. Next comes the mic or the DI, and that does make a difference. There can be a pad on the microphone or on the DI, so if you've got a weak signal, you should check that too. The next part of our chain is our analog preamp. This brings our signal from mic level to line level, so all the rest of our gear can use it. Every console, whether it's analog or digital, has an analog preamp. The digital consoles just have an analog to digital converter right after it. The analog to digital converter takes an electrical signal and turns it into ones and zeros. It's important to get this level right because if we don't use enough level into the converter, we're gonna be missing some information and we can lose some of the detail. But the thing you really wanna avoid is digital clipping. This is like you zoomed in too far with your camera lens and you cut out your Aunt Doris in the family photo. There's no amount of Photoshop that can get her back. All right, that looks great. Everybody smile. Oops. So on a digital console, where do you want to put your input meters? Well, I like to aim for about negative 12 to negative 18. This gives me plenty of headroom, but I've still got a good healthy signal even for a really dynamic input. Now, once our signal's been converted into digital, there's a bunch of processing options we have. But before we go there, there's the digital trim. This allows us to control the level at the beginning of the signal chain, regardless of what the analog preamp is doing. So if you're on a Midas console and you wanna drive your preamp a little bit harder, but you don't want the signal level to be that hot for the rest of the chain, you can use the digital trim to dial that back a little bit. If you're not at risk of clipping and your fader's still at negative 20 and it's just loud enough, you could use your digital trim to dial that back so that you can put your fader up a little bit further. But let's be honest, if you're at a church with multiple engineers and most of them are volunteers, this could be too easily overlooked and trip somebody up. I've got another solution for you that I'll tell you about in a minute. Okay, now EQ and compression are gonna behave the same on analog and digital consoles when it comes to gain structure. You can still clip the signal if you didn't clip the preamp, if you boost with EQ or boost the makeup gain on the compressor. Is this EQ ridiculous? Why yes, yes it is but it does show that you can clip internally, even if the mic pre wasn't. This is why I really like consoles that let you choose your metering point either right off the preamp or after all your processing. Now, a side note, I love mixing on analog consoles. Every knob is right where it's supposed to be, and you can use muscle memory to just snap, grab a knob, twist it, and make your adjustment. There's no layers, there's no menus, it's awesome. And they sound cool too. If you like analog consoles, go ahead and mash that thumbs up. Now, the compressor needs to be looked at a little bit more closely. The compressor's job is to turn down the signal when it gets too loud and let it recover or come back up when the signal gets quieter. If we set our preamp levels so that our fader sits right around zero and then we compress the signal and turn it down, we're gonna wanna push up the fader to make up for it. Instead of that, you can use the compressor's makeup gain to trim the level back up so that your fader can sit in a good spot. Now, if you're new to compression and you're still trying to hear what it sounds like, I recommend that you set the makeup gain so that the average level is about the same whether or not you have the compressor engaged or bypassed. This way, your ear isn't tricked to thinking that the louder signal is better because your ear just thinks louder is better. Now, one more thing about the compressor is that if you boost before the compressor, that's essentially lowering the threshold. So if you turn up your gain after you've set your compression threshold, you're going to get more compression. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is something that you need to know. Today's drink of the day is a loose leaf green tea from Harney & Sons called Chun Mi. It's a nice grassy, earthy tea, and green tea has a lot of health benefits. I also have it in my insulated sealed mug because you always need to practice safety when it comes to beverages around sound equipment. Now, one more thing that you need to look out for are inserts. An insert will send the entire signal out to another processor and then bring it back in on the channel path. Just like a compressor, it's good to have your inserts retain the same average level, whether or not they're in or bypassed. This way, if you get in a pinch, you can hit bypass and it doesn't ruin your mix. Now, I love mixing with plugins, but it is running on another system and systems can crash. 
It's not likely, but I do want to have a way to bail myself out without totally disrupting my mix. So if you've got a bunch of plugins in the chain, remember to bypass each one and make sure that the average level doesn't change too much. It's kind of like an electric guitar player getting their pedal board dialed in so that each pedal keeps their level about the same, unless they're doing a boost, of course. It's just a more professional way to work. In a simple system, the next step would just be the master fader and then on to your speakers. But we don't always have simple systems. Let's talk about VCAs and groups. A VCA is basically a remote control for your fader, while a group is actually just another processing stop before it goes to the master fader. You can't EQ or compress a VCA. It's like trying to hook up a compressor to your remote control for your TV. It's just not going to do anything. With a group, the audio actually passes through it, so you can process it with EQ and compression. I talk more about this in the Routing Rodeo section of my Worship Sound Wisdom course. You can find out more information and join the waiting list through the link down below. All right, now that we've wrapped with our console, we can think about the entire sound system with the PA. The system processor and the power amps are the next step in our system. If you're tempted to pull your master fader back, that might be a clue that your power amps are turned up too loud. You don't have to have them turned up all the way to 11. Now, you don't want to run out of headroom where you're pushing your console up too much to get over that big room full of people singing to Jesus. I mean, that's the point, right? We want people to sing to Jesus. So you've got to dial in your amp so that you have enough headroom, but that you're not tempted to pull down your master fader. If you've got a complicated system and don't want to dial back all those amps, you could use your system processor just to pull down the input too. The system processor adds EQ, level, and delay for all the different speakers in your system. It's important that this is set up right so that you get an even sound across your entire room. Now let's circle back around to our monitor system. You might have a system that has a separate console that has preamps feeding your monitor system, but a lot of churches are running the monitors off the same preamps as your front of house console. Any adjustment to the preamp of your console will change the level of their mix, whether that's a personal monitor mixer or if they're running off an aux sound. Sometimes you just need more level for monitors than you need up front of house. This is especially true with personal monitor mixers and drums. So if they need a whole lot more juice for their monitor mix than I need up front of house, I'll assign all my drums to a DCA or a VCA and just pull back the level by 10 dB. This way they get enough level and my faders are still hanging around at zero. Now one cool feature of two consoles being fed from the same preamp is gain compensation. When they're linked, they'll automatically turn up or down the digital trim to compensate for the changes at the preamp. This is a lifesaver. But if you don't have it, just make sure that you holler out to somebody else when you change the gain. Now, one more thing to look out for is if you're running a monitor mix off an aux send, make sure that that aux send is pre-fader so that your fader adjustments at front of house don't affect the balance of their monitor mix. Now, some consoles will allow you to choose what processing you send to the monitor mixer. A lot of times, to keep it simple, I won't send them compression because I want to be able to compress a whole lot that would mess up the balance of their monitor mix and the dynamic range of how they're playing. So if my options are limited, I'll just send post high pass filter. This can clean up some of the rumble of their mix, but it's not going to send all my processing changes to their ears. Now, you could also have a separate console that's running off the same preamp, but it has its own channel processing. Then you can send some EQ and compression to them that doesn't affect your front of house mix. Even in this situation, I do keep it minimal. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and mash that thumbs up. Subscribe, ding the little bell, and share this with a friend. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.